Hey there, this is Adrian from Tactical Project Manager. And in this video, we are going to talk about the 11 essential documents that you need for your project, that you need for any project. So this article is useful when you're just starting your new project and you don't know, you know, how to go about planning this project, what do you need, and specifically what documents do you need to prepare. And the the documents I I selected those documents because these are the the documents which help you really to create a to set up a solid project plan and a solid project. Like you can you can skip a document, but then again you won't be focusing on certain elements of the project, um, like risks, for example, and this will have bad consequences. So these are the things you need to focus on. So it's not about creating bureaucracy for you although it's it's quite a challenge to set up all these documents anyway let's go through them one by one i've listed them here in the article here's the table and <clears throat> i just give you a brief overview about what the project what the, the document is about and what it looks like so the first one is the action and issue tracker so you need some sort of document where you keep track of all the pending tasks, whether it's small things like you have to book a meeting room or you have to order drinks for the project team or big things like um, creating some sort of specification or setting up some technical process. This is the document. Uh, let's just take a look at it. So you can download it also here. This is the Excel file. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So here you can put up the, the project name so that it's customized for you. And then basically for every open task or issue, you have a number. So that's, that way it's easy to communicate. Like you don't have to talk about the, the description. You can just say, okay, can you look into issue number three or task number five? I assigned this to you. Here's the link to the Excel. Um, I always like to structure the tasks by phase, by project phase, and also by process. This makes it just very helpful or makes it easier to you know, filter the tasks and issues. Then who has entered the task? So because once the task is completed or an issue has been resolved, uh, I wanna, Go back to the person who has raised this issue or has requested this work to be done. So I need to keep track of that. Who is the respons responsible? Who is taking care of the task and the deadline? And the, of course, the status. So here in the Excel, you have all the three statuses open, in work, and done. And you can add a comment here, which is also very helpful. So that's really the most important document. Uh, then there's the project charter, and let's take a look at the project charter. You can also download it here under the link, which I entered here. And as I wrote here in the in the article, a project charter is like a contract. It's it's a, a summary of the key decisions and elements and milestones of the project, like also budget responsibilities you know, project organization, people involved, like a contract, which you once, once it's finalized, you even print it out and you, you, you have it signed, you sign it yourself and the client should sign it. So this way you, agree, you ensure that everybody has a, a common understanding. And this is what the template looks like. So this is a really very basic template. You may want to add some chapters or you know make it look a little bit nicer that's up to you but these are the key points that you need to cover so you always have a, an executive summary you talk about the project itself what it's about what it's the what is the goal so some sort of definition the project organization so who is involved even you can just paste the the names of the people and their you know organizational assignment 
project plan, include a screenshot of the project timeline. I'm going to look at it in, in a second. Project costs, this is a screenshot from the budget, or at least you need to document the cost some, somewhere, which is here. Project assumptions, this is helpful, you know, to list out the the assumptions that your project is based upon. So what are the the things that have to be true or that that you assume to be true in order to plan the project? And project risks, very important. And in the appendix, you can just add, you know, other links, links to your shared drive, to additional material. So here's also a version history. I like to track this as well because you, you make changes as you create a project charter and different people will be working on the on the document. So it's good to know to track the version and what was changed for what was the reason for the change, but also when it was approved. So here's the executive summary. Doesn't have to be long, maybe a third or half a page maximum. And then here this is the project definition. So here you tr you describe in detail the project's purpose, objectives, and scope. And it also makes sense to list these smart targets. So specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bounded targets. What what is it you want, or what what is it the project is supposed to achieve? And I'm giving you an example here. Project organization. So this is where I'm usually just I, I paste a screenshot of the org chart of the project org chart, and I may also include a table with the names of the people involved and their role and maybe their department where they are from. Project plan we are, we will look into the project plan a little bit later, but here include again a screenshot of your either MS project plan or your Excel project timeline and add the major like start date, end date and the major mi milestones. So, you know, one is the, when does the planning phase end? When does the, you know, concept phase end? When does the execution or implementation phase end? And, you know, the major, major milestones. Ah, here's the screenshot of the project timeline. So this is also, the Excel, which you can download on Tactical Project Manager. Here's the link. Project cost, very important. Managers usually just care about the cost. That's true. So, I mean, you would only list here the, the planned values because you wouldn't have actual cost yet when you're setting up a new project. But so, this is the screenshot also includes the actual cost, which is not correct. Anyway, this is a screenshot from the from the project budget template from which you can get also from me. Project assumptions. Here are some examples what project assumptions are. So take a look at that. And project risks. And let me say this about setting up the project charter. This is usually a long process and you sit together with the client, you discuss um, how to approach a project, what are the responsibilities, who is going to do what um, on the client side, on the contractor side. And this, this is like a, a negotiation process. It takes some time and then you discover new things that you need to clarify, like uh, about this specific topic, um, you know, what, what, you know, what, how do you deliver this kind of information to us? Uh, responsibility, all these kinds of things should be should be listed here as as an assumption, for example. And yeah, then you send it around, you get feedback on your project charter, and you um, refine it and then get it approved at the end, which is very important. So it's not that you as a project leader are writing everything. I usually write like the basis, I the the, the content I, I usually start to write, but then we make refinements. I will sit together with the client and I make make edits and get everything approved. The risks, so we'll also talk about the risk log later on. 
appendix. So for example, a glossary is also helpful because not everybody will be familiar with your project terminology. So in order to avoid questions, it's helpful to include here the, the glossary. So this is, was a, a very quick uh, overview of the project charter, what it looks like. And as I said, you can download it here under this link. Project organization. So as I said, this is just a simple org chart. I don't have any specific template for that. Uh, I included here a link which shows you how you can create org charts easily in PowerPoint. That's usually how I do it. Project roles and responsibilities, very important. So once you know what roles you need, what kind of jobs the project requires, and once you know who is going to work on these tasks, on, on this job, you need to clarify very specifically the, the responsibilities. So what do you expect from, from your people? Um, let me just see if I have an example here. Well, uh, let's open here this link. This is an article which dives deep into the process of how to define roles and responsibilities. Just to show you what it looks like. Um, yeah. So this slide is an example for a responsibility description for a design engineer, just an example. The design engineer is in charge of designing the necessary parts, taking into account customer requirements, industry best practices, as well as cost and technical limitations. Um, he's expected to meet agreed deadlines, very important. I mean, it makes sense to list this. Not everybody likes to stick to deadlines. But also, yeah, like communication rules, like in case a deadline cannot be met, the engineer must inform the project leader immediately. Uh, so also not just the work side, not the work responsibility, responsibility, but also like communication. Like once the work has been done, the engineer should communicate this regularly to the client, for example. Otherwise you will just have people doing their, their job, but they are not, you know, the project is not moving forward because they don't know what to do with their, um, the work result. So. When you when you create the when you define the responsibilities, I like to you know visualize how the the communication flow should look should be like. So, uh, as I said, I want the engineer not just to do his technical work. I also want him to escalate or inform me proactively in case of a problem. So I don't have to always go back to the engineer. And also when once he's I also want him to liaise and to sit together, work closely together with the with the client. And that's why I list this specifically here. So, and when this, this collaboration works smoothly, then I, my work as a project leader is a lot easier because I don't always have to steer and, and manage the, you know, micromanage the, my people. So this is, this is just an example and you would um, set this up. You would create this for your specific roles. And usually you present the roles and responsibilities at the project kickoff when the entire team is present. Next one is the project plan. So here you show the activities and the timeline. So this is also one of the most important documents. And you can download my Excel template, which looks, which is a simple Gantt chart. Um, so, so you have the, the phases and the major activities on in the rows in the first row. And then you have the time timeline here on the columns in blue and this is actually what the all i all i used in my projects and 
I didn't use any tool because it's, it's way too complicated. So you can get that here. And if you are creating, if you are, if in your role, you have to regularly create new project plans for the client because you're making proposals and offers, then Excel is a bit, you know, cumbersome because it's so manual. So a great tool is Tom's Planner, which allows you to do just the same thing, drawing Gantt charts. I just open Tom's Planner here for you. Uh, it's a paid software. It's like, so it's like uh, 10, 10, around 10 bucks a month. Let's just show you quickly what it looks like. So I have an account here and I have a sample. So here are my project plans. I just opened my project schedule. So again, you have here, you can create here the faces and the tasks in the rows. And you can, and then you draw the activities on the timeline and you can even link those activities so it becomes like a critical path so then when you move one activity when you postpone one activity so then it, it moves also the connected tasks which is really great which you don't have in excel this kind of functionality and you can you know color colorize the the, the actions the activities according to your needs it's a very nice tool and you can I mean, this is a very simple project plan, but this works even for, you know, very complicated, complex project timelines with thousands of activities. So and it's used um, worldwide by, by many major companies. And what's also great is you can share, you can share the project plan with your uh, coworkers. So they, no, they don't need to have an account, which is nice. So I can just click here, the share button. And you can print, you can export it as a PDF, for example. So really cool, have a look at it. Project budget. So this is my favorite because um, I think setting up the budget is really a, a major step which you need to get through and you need to have your estimates right. You need to know how you how you price your, your activities and the work. So you need a good budget budget tracker and I just want to show you mine. So you can get it also here. You can download it here. There's some description, how you, how, you know, how you have to use it, but basically you have a, this, the first sheet is a reporting sheet, which pulls out the values from the other sheets and creates and accumulates, summarizes the plan and actual cost, a graph, which you can include in your management presentations. And then you have different tabs, for example, here for the labor. So here I just enter the, the plan, planned effort and the actual effort. So it's nice because I have a immediate plan actual comparison month by month. And this is how, what I did, you know, in my project. And you have the summarized values by year. So I have I had planned in 44 days, but I'm two days uh, below the planned value. So I'm, I'm saving money, which is good. The cost sheet is, it basically multiplies the, the estimated hours with the amounts in the, which is specified in the rates tab. So check a look. Take a look at this one. So for example, a uh, accountant costs, uh, I price it at $900 a day, which is like an estimated rate. I also can track my travel cost in a separate sheet. Investments, other costs. So it's very a very clean and simple template and I've got really good feedback. People have told me that you know where they spend like one day one entire day to plan their project it took them only one hour to plan out the, the, the full project which is great so take a look at it you can download it here uh, so I can make this stakeholder matrix 
you want to know which people are involved in the project or some somehow affected by the project and you don't want to have any surprises where you know you're six months into the project and then some department or somebody comes up and says oh what are you doing here you're changing my processes and you think oh my god i didn't uh, it's first time i meet you uh, we should have spoken earlier uh, that's why you do a stakeholder analysis at the beginning of your project to find out exactly who is involved who, sh who you should involve in the project and i have an article which walks you through the entire process of how you do a stakeholder analysis take a look at this as well and let me see if i have a template um oh i do that's nice you can download it from this article which is linked here it's a very simple excel hope you can see that just a couple of columns who is the stakeholder? Who is the contact person? What's the impact on the project? Is it a very critical stakeholder or you know, lower impact, which means um, yeah, the, the influence on the project is, is like small. Describe the relationship to your project, like in what way is the stakeholder affected by your project? Does it change his process his or her processes? Um, whatever how do you plan to include or to involve the stakeholder and any feedback that you collected and always share this information to show that you have done your homework you have investigated who's got who's got to be involved in the project risks log very important too as you see these are all important these documents that's why i have listed them here not to make your life harder really so good project managers they always start by a uh, project by thinking what can go wrong in my project what are the biggest risks and if you do that you will come up with a list of risks and you can plan for those risks and planning means you can either do something about it that uh, the impact of the risk will not be as big like for example, if you have team members who are not not so you know who are not experts yet, like junior team members, they need more training. So the risk is that the project cannot um, complete some of the tasks because uh, team members are lacking knowledge. So what you do, mitigating action, is to create uh, to to make it to organize a training or to hire a coach who will coach your team less your your junior team members also you have some some cases you cannot really mitigate the risks then you have to think about a plan b so suppose you are planning to travel to another country uh, for the project but then there's a i don't know there uh, the airline is on strike the pilots are on strike you can't do anything about it so you have to work remotely and you instead of you know waiting to be surprised if there's if you know there's a quite a risk of this happening then you plan ahead you know what do i need for a for an effective on collaboration through through telephone and uh, web uh, desktop sharing so you need a headphone a headset um i need a quiet room i cannot work in in the in the cubicle office for example Maybe also I need a big room for the entire team because the entire team won't be able to travel. So you need a big, need to block or reserve a, a big room, things like that. So these are risks you need to think about and plan for. And here's the template you, which I am offering you here. You can download here under this link, which shows you how to conduct a risk analysis it's called do a risk and assessment so you won't fall on the face and yeah it's described here in detail so i won't go into detail further detail here 
A communication plan. A communication plan, I, maybe you haven't heard about this yet. This is also a very important tool because the project success is heavily dependent on how well the communication takes place in a project, which means like co communication in the sense of people collaborating together. Like, is it going smoothly and people are helping out each other if there's a problem without, you know, always going back, getting back to you for help. You want the people and the team to, to support each other and motivate each other and help, help each other out if there's a problem. And also to realign and to, to, you know, update each other on a frequent basis. So this is good communication. But also you want to, you know, involve management, inform management. They're expecting uh, an update from you on a regular basis. And um, it's a good way to plan this kind of communication up front and show, ev show everybody how you, how you intend to go about establishing good communication in your project. So here's a communication plan which you can download. And it's all, again, this article walks you through the process of creating this communication plan. So what does it look like, the communication plan? It's super simple. The first thing you do is like list out the meetings that you're the, the regular meetings that you're planning to hold like you have a project status meeting for example every week which is a physical meeting uh, maybe you have different sub teams so you can say the the core team should meet every every week but the extended team it's a, it's enough if people meet on a monthly basis and you block a meeting room and you list out who is going to be involved in this meeting and this way people know um, when they are gonna when they are gonna meet and when they can exchange uh, information, and of course you block those you res you make uh, Outlook invitations for those meetings, but also list out the email communication and updates you're planning to do. In what frequency is it monthly? Is it weekly? Is it biweekly? Who is who are the recipients? Like the steering board, the CEO, the management, accounting, you know whoever is expecting an update from you. Just list it out and share it with everybody and people will have, um, they will give you their feedback. Maybe they have different, you know, additional wishes regarding your the communication. And this is great. That's why you plan it upfront. So everybody has clarity. Back to the documents. A scope statement is the document number 10, the next one. Um, so scope statement and requirement specification, you can say these are different documents. I combined them here. Just, I, I don't wanna make it too complicated, but of course you need one document which describes the customer requirements. What does the customer want? So if you're building a new machine, your scope statement or requirement specification would describe in detail the features of the machine, the cost, the material used, uh, functionality, etc., and how you plan to set up the machine at the customer side, for example. This is a very detailed, long document, usually consisting of, you know, dozens of pages or even hundreds of pages and maybe drawings, anything which describes um the the product that you're or the process you're setting up in your project <clears throat> um i do i have a document for this i have a scope statement yeah take a look at this it looks similar as the project charter but it's going much more into detail. So here you list also acceptance criteria. So how do you define the success of the machine, for example, of the building that you created, whatever. Any constraints, any assumptions? What are the major project deliverables? Uh, you, can, you can 
also split the scope statement from the requirement specification. In my projects, we only had a requirement specification, so a very detailed document outlining the, the features of, of the product or of the system that we implemented. But at least have one this document which describes the customer's needs. So the, the scope statement and the requirement specification is, is the document which, you know, describes, which sets the boundaries of the project in terms of what you need to do, how much it will cost and the timeline. Now it can happen that the client has comes to you with new wishes during the project. So I like to have the, my floor, you know, marble instead of wooden flooring. I or often people discover during the project that there's some extra work to be done. Like we rolled out IT systems. So it often happened that the customer noticed that there, they had another, you know, either internal or external IT system, which they forgot into in their initial, initial, initial analysis. And, but we still needed to set up a link between those systems, which was again, additional work, additional cost, and of course, additional risks. So the, the key point is that you track those changes. That's what they're called to the original project scope. So all these extra wishes from the customer, even if they are small, even if they are, if they don't cost any money, list them here because still you want to have a document which shows you, you know, why is the car blue? I wanted a, why is the car, the car blue? Okay. Because you wanted, you asked me to change the color of the car three months ago. You know, you want to have proof why you changed this or that feature in your project. And also it, you can, you should implement a process to, you know, review these changes. So never just implement the changes right away, but have a, a formal process where the change is recorded in a tracking sheet like this one. Then, um, you make it, you, first of all, you gather the requirements. What, what, what does the customer actually want? Is it a bigger change? What is the cost for implementing the change? And then having this change approved by management because in it's extra budget, it's not included in your orig original budget. So management needs to approve it. And only after the approval has been given, your team will implement the change. So that's why this change tracking form is very important. And for bigger changes, you also want to document the the requirements in a change request form, which is what it looks like. It's again, a technical description. This is a very basic template, but that's all, that's all you need. And here the client and you together, you describe what should be done. You know, how should, what changes should be done to the machine? What does it, what does it do with the interfaces or the data? What's the impact, you know? compared to what was originally requested. And this document is then the basis for the technical implementation. So these are the 11 essential documents, which I suggest you should create for any project, irrespective of the size, regardless of the industry you're in, it's, they are always helpful and during the process of setting up the documents, you will, you know, it helps to think through your ideas and you will come across uh, issues or ideas that you initially didn't consider, which helped you to create a better project plan and a, a solid project. So hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and if you like the article and if you like any further of such, you know, videos. Okay, take care.